Dr. Tiffany Anderson, superintendent of the Jennings School District, begins her morning with a four-hour commute to work, after which she can be found, sneakers and all, out on crossing guard duty. Anderson oversees seven schools, 3,000 students, and hundreds of teachers and staff, but there's no job she won't do. I bring um, hot chocolate coats. I'm the first face they see before they walk through the door. Jennings is a town of 15,000 people just outside St. Louis, Missouri. It borders Ferguson, which was the center of protest following the shooting of an unarmed black teenager by a white police officer in 2014. Like Ferguson, Jennings has a population of mostly African Americans, one quarter of whom live below the poverty line. What was this school district like when you first arrived? Four years ago, Jennings didn't really feel like a community that had hope. Almost every month, I am attending a funeral of uh, either a current student or a uh, student's uh, parent, and often those are, you know, victims of crime. You know, we have uh, two students uh, at our element, one of our elementary schools, where um, they literally had to crawl out of the window as their mother was being stabbed. Um, you know, things that we can't imagine. 17-year-old Gabby Scott is a junior at Jennings High School. How old were you when you found out you were pregnant? 15. It was did rough. You, did you cry? I did, a lot. So much, I probably don't even have tears left. Just a few years ago, many students in Jennings were in danger of not graduating. Dropping out was not an unusual occurrence. Did you think about, like, how am I going to go to school and have this baby? It was the first thing that was brought to my mind. Like, I don't think I'm going to be able to go to school and be pregnant. Do you think that people had sort of written this school district off? I think in many ways, because Jennings has so much poverty, people really uh, weren't sure if improvement was possible. With grants, partnerships, and some creativity, Dr. Anderson balanced the budget, launched a college prep program, and brought back arts education. She also began to address issues that stemmed far beyond academics. I learned that food was the uh, greatest issue, so we decided we would open a food pantry. We give out 8,000 pounds of food a month. Approximately 200 to 400 people every two weeks get food from Jennings. And then we looked at health care. We have about um, two to three mental health therapists at every school. Washington University, they agreed to partner and um, they provide a pediatrician. So look, you break an arm, just come to school, we got it. This is a place where parents can come and do their laundry for free in exchange for volunteering an hour of their time at school. And it's pretty incredible when you think about it because it's such a simple way to get parents involved while at the same time addressing the very real needs of many of these families. We generally say, if all you can do is make it to school, we'll take care of the rest. Food, clothes, shoes, health care. What kind of changes did you start to see in your students when you started to remove those barriers? So when kids knew that we cared, there was almost like this light bulb went off, this willingness to try. We are now fully accredited. Four years ago, we were meeting 57% of the standards. We now are meeting 81%. We've been exceeding the state benchmarks for two consecutive years. Dr. Anderson also introduced a program to support teen moms like Gabby, as well as parents in the community. It allowed Gabby to stay focused on school while raising her son, Carter. On top of having a baby, you are a straight-A student, right? Yes. <laughs> you are going to be class president. Yes. And you are on your way to being valedictorian. Yes. <laughs> how, how are you doing this all? How are you managing it all? I have um, teachers who are willing to work with me in my time management. How Carter comes with me to my student council events. If you were pregnant before all of these programs were introduced, before Dr. Anderson, what do you think your life would be like? Probably would have given up a long time ago, but with the support of like Jennings and their programs, it's been easier. We are all passing our tests, willing to come to school. It's making us more excited to be here. This community borders Ferguson, which has seen a lot of unrest. Um, this is a critical time in our country. Mm -hmm. Has that brought greater urgency to the work that you do here? 
I believe our role is to show people that there is a system of oppression and to gain the greatest amount of education they can so that they have the power to make changes. Can this work be replicated in other places? Now, this work we've done in Jennings can happen anywhere, in any size district, and in any community. Zip code should not determine the quality of education or health care, and we will not allow for that to determine uh, where kids end up. To see how this young woman conquered incredible odds to become a Gates Millennial Scholar, watch this next video. Outside of my house, it was a lot of gangs, and my sister was always involved with them. I saw so many graphic things that she went through. Did you ever think about joining a gang? No. It made me more focused. I was always the nerd of the family. And please don't forget to subscribe to Secret Stories so you can see new videos every week.